going on guys? My name is Griffin Gardner and uh, I just wanted to make a little a little walkthrough video of my 1998 BMW E36 328i. Um, I get a lot of questions on how I did a lot of this stuff. Um, I've been building this car for probably the last four years or so. We've owned it a lot longer than that but really dove in hard in the last year in a serious build. Um, and I just kind of wanted to give a quick little walkthrough of some of the things I got going on so that if you are building an E36, whether it be for stance, drift, track, whatever you want to do, a lot of what I'm going to tell you and what I've learned will apply. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the very first thing that's probably the center point of this whole build that I want to start out with is the Broadway Static V2 coilovers. Um, these, these are bar none what makes doing this sort of ridiculous static stance on 17s possible with an E36 and really any car. Um, I'm running 16k springs in the front, 18k springs in the rear. Um, they have the upgraded pillow ball top mounts as well as the um, locking collars on the coilovers. So as opposed to like under a normal coilover and your spring perch, you have two separate lock collars where you have to loosen one to actually just preload on the spring. These just have an Allen key lock that locks everything in place so that you don't have to do that. These coilovers ride like like nothing else I've ever felt before. So even at this ridiculously low ride height, which it's kind of off because the car is in the air right now, um, it's smooth as can be. So that's probably the key point of this build. Now kind of moving on to some of the finer details, um, in order to accommodate and accept those stiff springs on an E36, you're gonna wanna take good care of your uh, front strut uh, towers because these these strut towers if you don't know this they like to crack and mushroom when you put stiffer springs on these things so what i have is i have the garagistic reinforcement plates on top of my uh, broadway coilovers as well as this rogue engineering race brace to completely triangulate the front end so the garagistic uh, reinforcement plates are fantastic because rather than the traditional bmw oem ones they don't have a restricted area in the center, so you can get full access to the camber plate adjustment even with the plate in place. That's a great feature. This Rogue Engineering Race Brace, if I'm being honest, it was just the coolest looking strut bar I could find. Um, and I'd always wanted one since they came out with these for the E36. And one popped up for sale. They had one in stock on Bimmer World, and I scooped it. I haven't seen any more for sale recently, so sorry if you wanted it, but the last one was mine. Um, <laughs> so moving on. Some more stuff up here that you might notice. I have a uh, AFE Pro Dry um, intake. This intake, kind of on the fence about recommending it. It's it sounds great, the fit is great, but the install was a nightmare, and it was definitely meant for the 3.5 inch MAF, not R3 inch. I think is what ours is stock, and it comes with this little adapter, and the instructions were just not good, but. Like I said, it works, it looks really good, the box fits fantastic, it's isolated, so I'm happy with it. But like I said, install is a bit of a nightmare, um, so just take that at your own discretion. Um, something else you might notice up here, I have Depot European glass headlights. I actually have mine modified to accept LEDs. Really all that requires, if you wanna do that, you're gonna have to take a hole saw to the back dust covers um, just to accommodate the size of your traditional LED bulb in the heat sink is what I should say. Um, man, what's some other stuff we got going on up here? Really? Oh, here, if you want to come around here. Okay, so this was a big deal. This exhaust, I'll talk more about it in detail, but if you look in here, I've got a set of Schmiedman S-Tech headers. Schmiedman makes fantastic stuff. They're a company out of Denmark. And you might think, okay, well, if I order headers from Denmark, it's gonna take them years to get here. No, these were actually here in two days from the time I ordered them from Denmark. They're actually faster here than the previous eBay headers, which I purchased, and these are only 250 US dollars. I recommend them greatly. One thing to note, the holes on them where they actually mount to the head of the engine, they're a little oversized, but really that's kind of a benefit because it gives you a bit of room to make sure that they mount up to your downpipe and that way you can kind of finesse them because they're meant to work with a stock downpipe. Obviously, I don't have that anymore, um, but if you do have a stock downpipe, these are a great upgrade. Sound amazing. Way lighter than the stock headers too as well, if that's something you care about. I also have deleted my secondary air pump. Um, there's really nothing to that. Anytime you do headers on an OBD2 car, I know everyone knows this, 
you're going to have to delete that. Um, I don't have it uh, a simulator or anything like that because I have a tune from 22 RPD, which I'll I'll talk more about in a moment. Um, but as far as up front here, that is. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to move on to talk about the exterior of the car. All right, so I just want to take a second and kind of talk about the exterior of uh, my E36. Um, I'm a big fan of simplicity and OEM plus styling. Um, so we already talked about the headlights. I kind of work my way from front to back. Up front, we have the same typical M3 bumper everyone runs. This one is actually from ECS Tuning um, and it comes as a kit. I ordered it. This was actually one of the first things I ever did to the car. I ordered it as a kit with the front bumper, the side skirts, and the rear bumper. Um, I have satin black um, front facelift grills. Obviously this is a facelift car, but I'm just saying they are facelift grills. Um, I have the OEM front lip. I have OEM fog lights. I have the whole OEM front mesh grill. Everything's mounted as it should be from the factory. Um, I have the brake ducts, M3 brake ducts. Um, let me try to think. Let's move our way back here just a little bit. Um, went ahead, so these, these I need to replace soon. A while back I got clear side markers and I decided I wanted to move towards a more monochrome smoked look. So I just have those wrapped and they're, they're starting to bubble. So I need to replace those soon. Um, coming down here, down the side of the car, you can see I have these uh, M3 door moldings. Uh, they look 10 times better than the factory non-M moldings, which are a uh, bulkier, more ex extruded uh, door molding. I have replica M3 mirrors, um, just because the replicas are pretty much identical except for the glass to the M3 mirrors. Let's see what else. Oh, cool, cool thing about my car. You've probably noticed in a lot of pictures that my window tint looks really, really dark. It's really not that dark, but the color of the car kind of makes it look darker. I have ceramic tint on all, all the glass in the car, 50% on the windshield, 15 on the sides. For legal reasons, I actually meant 35. Um, so moving a little further back, I have OEM door moldings or door handle moldings that I've replaced twice, which is great. Um, M3 side skirts, along with the correct OEM weather stripping, which is a huge thing I see missing from a lot of cars, but it makes a world of difference. So I guess let's move a little further back. Um, this is actually, so talking about the exterior, this is actually the original convertible top. It's got a few defects like some, really this, these are the only two defects in the exterior. I have no idea how this happened. I guess the top got caught on something when it was shutting. Two little, uh, they're not even holes, they're just areas where the fabric has kind of been caught. Um, now, the rear window has been replaced. Um, I actually had a shop replace it, an upholstery shop, who actually had experience on E36s, a really old guy. Um, he did it for about $500 because mine actually cracked. So I had to replace it, but that's one of the best visual things I've ever done to keep this a clean looking convertible. Um, let's try to see what else. So I guess moving further back, we have an M3 rear bumper. Um, a lot of people don't realize, but there actually is a pretty massive difference from a non-M rear bumper to an M3 rear bumper. It's a lot more than just the diffuser. The bumper itself actually hangs lower. And if you're gonna do an M3 front bumper, I really think you should do an M3 rear bumper too, just because it gives it that more aggressive look. Um, just have some depot tail lights. These are actually not smoked. Um, I have a strip of smoke film on these as well. It's held up better than the side markers, but again, I really have, I, what I wanna do is I want to get all clear tail lights as well as the all clear uh, third brake light, but that's an expensive venture and uh, that's just something I got coming up. We already talked about the exhaust. I love the fact that the exhaust has staggered tip fitment. Um, before in my old setup, it actually matched the, uh, the width or the length, I should say, of the rear diffuser. Now it sticks out a little further. And at first, when I was told that that's how it was gonna be, I wasn't sure I'd like that, but being able to see it from the side profile of the car is just, I don't know, I love it. It's a, it's a little bit of a little bit of rice on an otherwise pretty simple car, but to me, I love it. Um, one more little detail over here. This is actually a genuine BMW Sport antenna. So these cars from the factory come with an antenna that's like this tall, at least the convertibles do. And this is actually one of the earliest things I ever did on this car. 
Um, so I have the genuine sport antenna, a brand new grommet, as well as a brand new antenna base because the antenna base in this car actually broke off a couple of years ago. So I had to replace that. I'm trying to think what else. Um, oh yeah, we can go ahead and pop the trunk. There's nothing crazy back here, but I will talk about it. So back here we have a, um, I think this is a 12 inch um, Pioneer Type E subwoofer, if I'm not mistaken. So fun story about this. This actually, in this box, was actually built for my mom's Nissan Altima that she had back in like 2004, 2005, and she had this in that car, as well as this amp. And it just so happened that this old box and this sub fit perfectly in the E36, as well as, like I said, the amp. And many, many, many years ago, probably back in 2007, uh, a Best Buy actually wired this into my stock head unit, and it's, it's done phenomenally. Everything is so clean. This is back in the days when you could actually get good car audio work done at Best Buy. So I'm very happy with that. It's old school. It, it makes more than enough uh, bass to fill in the low end that these cars don't have stock. Um, another little detail. So if you have a subwoofer in an E36, there's these luggage straps right here. And they actually are meant to hold down cargo, but since they're rubber and they can attach directly to the floor, they can stop your subwoofer from sliding around, which was a huge issue I had before. Nice little OEM way to do it. And if you can't tell, that's kind of my style. I kind of like to figure out how to use OEM parts to do stuff it wasn't really meant for. Um, but yeah, everything, I won't even lower it. I have the complete original tool kit. Everything is in there. There's nothing missing. Factory jack. Um, really not even missing anything down to these little push pins that are color coded for this uh, trunk carpet color. Those are, those are there as well. So I'm a bit of a detail freak, but that's pretty much the uh, exterior of the car. So now we'll go ahead and move on to the interior. All right, so now that we're inside, I kind of want to talk about a few of the details in here. So here I have a Renstall shift knob. This is actually a um, one of their metal ones. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember if it's aluminum. I want to say it's it's actually, I can't remember, but it's one of their metal ones. It's not the Delrin one. And I actually had this powder coated black. Um, here I have DT Motorworks um, Alcantara shift boot, as well as their Alcantara e-brake handle and their Alcantara e-brake boot. Um, you might've noticed here, this is actually a really, really cool thing. And I don't know the seller's name of this, but I found this on eBay and it replaces the coin holder with a phone holder, as well as a ring that gives you extra stability for drinks in these cup holders, which if you own one of these, you know these cup holders suck and you need all the help you can get. Back here, I have an OEM cassette holder and I actually had to modify the OEM center console in, or in order to accept this. But you can see I keep all my cassettes in there. Um, everything lights up, I installed the OEM ashtray i say oem a lot my bad <laughs> i installed the ashtrays light bulb in here to make sure this was illuminated as it was and from the factory and the cars that it came in um let's see what else i can talk about over here i have a european fog light switch um and actually what i'm planning on doing is where the rear fog light button would be. I'm actually gonna wire that in to be my city light switch, just so I can turn the city lights on and off um, as I please. Let's see what else. I still have the stock steering wheel. Um, I guess looking back here, I keep this in here at all times. This is the OEM um, wind deflector. Now this is normally only meant to be used when the top is off, and it basically um, just helps it to be where your wind is not like blowing your hair like crazy and it's just a, a more peaceful experience with the top down. What I actually learned I can do, since you can't tint the back plastic window, if you leave it up while you're driving with the windows up, it almost acts like rear window tint because it has a, uh, a mesh screen that blocks the rear, rear plastic window, which is actually, I don't know, I like it. It looks pretty cool from the outside as well. Um, let's see what else we got in here. Um, here, down here beneath my feet, I actually have a fire extinguisher. It's mounted up with the, the VAC Motorsports um, fire extinguisher bracket, and I also sourced the fire extinguisher from them. Um, I don't really know much about fire extinguishers, but I basically told them, I want a fire extinguisher that's not going to destroy my interior or exterior. If I ever have to use it, the cleanup will be easy, and this is what they gave me. So, 
see what else. Um, I believe that's it. Most of this interior is original. This glove box, don't even get me started on the E36 glove boxes. This is a hybrid of three glove boxes from three different E36s, just to make one good one. Um, all the rest of the interior is original. It's just been very well kept, very well taken care of. Um, and like I said, the convertible soft top is original. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the interior. All right, so this exhaust was made, by, was made by Sam Morgan at Solo Motorsports Atlanta, the downtown location. Uh, start with the tips. These tips are two three inch uh, double wall magna flow tips. I love the straight cut. Not a big fan of slant cut. It's just my preference. Um, and if you look under here, you can see I have a vibrant street power muffler. It's a single two and a half inch to single two, single two and a half inch in to a single two and a half inch out. And then there's a Y right here um, where he splits them to dual tips. The rest of my exhaust setup, we'll just go ahead and make it simple. It's literally just the Schmiedman headers to a Y, and then I literally one single two and a half inch straight pipe back to here. Plain and simple. One of the best sounding setups you can have on an E36 is a single two and a half inch. So yeah, that's pretty much it on the exhaust. So we're up underneath the car and I want to talk about this rear end setup because this is probably the meat and potatoes of this entire build. Probably one of the most important things and the things I spent the most amount of time on and obsessing over because I fought rear fitment issues on this car forever and I just wanted to be done with it. So probably the key point where we need to start is this limited slip 315 differential. This differential was made by my good friend Dante Bianchini. Um, the anti-bimmer on Instagram is what you might know him as. It's a 315 and it's not just a 315 straight out of another car into mine. This has been opened up. Two clutches have been replaced with three racing diffs clutches. It's got Condor Speed Shop ear mounts on each side. All fresh hardware, new seals. Um, as well as the front of the casing for the front mount has actually been drilled and tapped for a 14 millimeter bolt upgrade. Now to do that, that requires replacing the uh, bushing in the subframe, which is the front diff bushing, with a specialty bushing with an oversized hole. Condor makes that and they sell it as a complete kit. It's fantastic. You'll hear me talk about this on this car as we go through it. Every single thing on this car is Condor Speed Shop. I have every part that they make on this car and I would not change a thing. So coming around here, it's gonna be difficult to see, but the whole subframe is mounted with Condor Speed Shop subframe uh, bushings. Um, everything is powder coated. If you can kind of see the color, you might have seen it on some of my other stuff. It's called uh, Prismatic Powders Cadillac Gray. That includes the spring perches, the entire trailing arm, the subframe itself, um, and the e-brake cable mounts. Everything is uh, Cadillac Gray. I'm very particular about everything being nice monochrome matching, um, and I could not be happier with that color. You can also see back here these red camber arms, and so these have a bit of an interesting story. So these are actually Godspeed Project camber arms, and a lot of people hear Godspeed Project and they think they're, they're cheap and not very good. However, these camber arms are some of the nicest on the market, and I will stand by that. They come with an inner sealed OEM style ball joint, and most of these control arms have just a bushing there. I, I even like the Turner or the ECS arms, well not the Turner, but the ECS arms just have a rubber bushing there. These actually have an inner ball joint right here as opposed to just the rubber bushing so they don't bind no matter how your rear end moves. So <clears throat> one thing you should know about these camber arms is that when you get them they aren't meant to add camber. The Godspeed Project arms specifically are meant for camber correction. So they will take camber out. They actually are shorter than the OEM arms. So what I did is after I bought them, I realized I made a bit of a mistake because I run seven and a half degrees of camber. So I wanted more. I, w I went ahead and took measurements of the uh, threads and all I had to do to get more camber is just have machined a longer arm for the center. So a lot of people ask how I got this much camber. That's pretty much the root of it. It's literally just an M16 by 1.5 left hand thread rod on one side and an M16 1.5 right hand thread on the other. And then you can just take off the stock center, replace it, mount it up and you're good to go. Another little thing, if you can see right here, 
It's going to be my, probably hard to see on camera, but there is a silver ring right here. I have axle spacers. So I actually spaced out the axle because once you run this much camber, you start to start pulling the CVs apart. And it just gets a little sketchy on stock axles. So I went ahead and put a spacer, which spaces out the axle, reinforces it, and keeps the CVs in their proper place. Uh, I'm trying to think what else we need to talk about. Uh, oh, the trailing arms. So this is a huge thing, right? A lot of people obviously know that the rear trailing arm bushing problems on E36s is serious. So, the answer is never solid polyurethane for a trailing arm bushing. Obviously, um, you also should know that as the trailing arm tilts, if you have a solid polyurethane bushing there, tilts, I say, at you, if you add camber, that bushing is going to bind because it can't tilt. In order to have camber in an E36, your entire trailing arm has to tilt with the hub because it is the hub. So, you have to have mono ball bearings there. I don't care what anybody says, there's no excuse to have anything else there unless you run zero camber. If you run zero camber, then whatever, get poly. But you have to have a bearing there. In addition, I know you know that toe, toe is an issue when you do this. My toe brackets are custom from Dante as well. Um, K&M um, Metal Manufacturing makes these out in New Mexico. That's the place that Dante works. Um, so yeah, that's basically the rear end setup. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. Stock sway bar. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. All right. So let's talk about front fitment on E36s real quick. Um, mine's not perfect. There's a couple things I would have done differently, but just a guide. If you're on stock E36 front lower control arms, um, in order to get more negative camber, obviously if you run out of camber adjustment on your top hat camber plate on your coilover, what you're gonna have to do is Take the lower two bolts that bolt your coilover in, and you can actually add washers. Um, and what that essentially does is it will just basically tilt the coilover more. So it sounds really sketchy, but it's really not. You're going to have to use longer bolts to make sure you get proper thread engagement and torque them to spec, but it's really not that bad. I have five washers in here, which is a little ridiculous. Um, five or six, I can't even remember. Um, and in hindsight, what would have been a better option was to just go ahead and convert to E46 control arms. Um, you'll also notice that I, I do still have a little bit of gap right here, and that might not seem like much, but I have a 20 millimeter spacer on this front wheel, and it's already a 17 by nine with a 26 offset. So it's, it's, the E46 control arm essentially adds about 25 mil of spacer just in the control arm and gives you about negative four and a half degrees of camber. So that would have been a much better option. Um, other than that, my stock control arms are secured with Condor Speed Shop bushings. Um, oh, another point I wanna make is that on E36s, I see everybody, they slam their car and they take out the fender liners. You don't have to do that. Literally, there's no reason. If you have, a per if you have the proper tire size for what you're trying to do, you should never have to take out your, uh, just my, your fender liners. My brain just went blank. You should never have to take those out unless you run 18s. If you run 18s, it's a different ball game, but on 17s, you should never have to do that. So that's pretty much how I got the front fitment. Um, and yeah, like I said, E46 control arms, if your goal is fitment, just go ahead and do it. It's just, it's, it's a better option all around. But anyways, that's pretty much the setup.